in these days when we hear so much about racial intolerance and prejudice, it's good to be reminded of the New Testament story of the Good Samaritan, the hated foreigner who helped a wounded traveller, a story which is such a wonderful example of real compassion. This painting shows just one interpretation of the story by the 16th century Italian artist Jacopo Bassano. He liked to set his paintings against the background of a stormy sky and dark mountains. He was also one of the first major painters to include animals in his paintings. He enjoyed doing so, and that explains why two lively dogs are seen at the bottom right-hand corner, as well as his horse, which is very dark in colour and quite difficult to distinguish as it stands in front of the even darker rock. But to understand the real significance of this painting, we need to look back at the Gospel story and in particular, at one sentence which has four parts to it. First, a Samaritan as he journeyed. Secondly, came to where he was. Thirdly, when he saw him. Fourthly, he had compassion. So the first stage was the journey. And this is a universal experience, and indeed all the characters in the story were on a journey, going in one direction or another along the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. There was the wounded man who was stripped and beaten, the priest and the Levite who passed by, and the Samaritan. And we can think of this idea of a journey as the movement that we make through life, as one day gives way to another, as we concentrate on our own concerns and interests. And this is exactly what the priest and Levite were doing. You can see them in the painting on the left, just behind the red robe of the Samaritan. And one of them, the one nearest to us, is reading a book, probably the scriptures, as they pass on towards their duties in the temple. But then for many of us on the journey, something happens to shake our complacency or self-satisfaction, our security. And very often it's suffering of some kind or illness or bereavement, an accident, or loss of job. And this is what the wounded and robbed man in the story experienced. In the painting, we see him very vulnerable, naked apart from a cloth around his waist and a blood-stained bandage around his head, unable to help himself, needing help and support. And the Bible is full of examples of people who find themselves in this situation, who can no longer help themselves, but need to be rescued and saved. Indeed, some of our most realistic prayers arise out of situations like this. O Saviour of the world, save us and help us. O Lord, come to our aid. For many, such an experience is a turning point, an opportunity to find and rely on our deeper selves, to find a new relationship with the source of love and compassion. And this indeed was the experience of the wounded man in the story. But sometimes this change of direction on the journey can come about not through suffering, but rather through insight, by stepping off the moving pathway of the journey and coming into the present moment and seeing things as they really are. 
This is what the Samaritan did in the second part of the sentence. He came to where he was, the present moment. A Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was and saw him, saw the wounded man in the road. And it's through being awake in the present moment that not only can we see things as they are, but also connect in a way which has its origins in our depths, acting in love, patience, kindness, and with compassion. This is what the Good Samaritan was able to do. He saw the man was conscious of his need and acted with compassion, binding up his wounds and taking him to an inn where he could rest and recover. And what this painting does is to portray just one moment of the compassionate rescue. Artists are particularly good at representing the present moment. And what we see here is the moment when the Samaritan lifts the wounded man onto his horse. He has already poured on the oil and wine to cleanse the wounds and you can see the two containers right at the bottom of the picture. Now he has the difficult task of lifting what is clearly a dead weight onto a large and powerful horse. So the Samaritan's right foot is placed firmly on the rock and his right knee is bent as he grasps the wounded man around the waist to lift him up onto the saddle. It's clearly a great effort and a reminder that true compassion is not just kind thoughts and concerns, but a willingness to grapple with situations of need and to help in a practical way which may well demand great effort. In fact, this was true of all the actions of the Good Samaritan to help the wounded man, binding up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, taking him on his horse to an inn, paying for his care and accommodation, and promising to return. The artist, Jacopo Bassano, was someone who sought in his paintings to bring the events of the Bible closer to the lives of ordinary people and into his own time and place. And so he sets this story in an Italian landscape with down-to-earth figures and animals. And in the distance, we can see his hometown of Bassano near Venice. And we too can set this story in our own time. For to return to where we started, many of the recent victims of the coronavirus have been cared for in a practical, compassionate and down-to-earth way by people who, like the Samaritan, are often from other countries and who, from time to time, have been receiving racial abuse. So this fine painting by Jacopo Bassano does much to bring to life the story of the Good Samaritan and helps us to see that the question Jesus poses at the end of the parable is so critical and relevant to us. Which of these do you think proved neighbour to the man who was injured? The lawyer replied, the one who showed compassion, the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do thou likewise. 